name is Ellen Jackson. I'm the sole proprietor of Victory Rose Thoroughbreds here in Vacaville. Uh, we raise about 70 to 80 foals a year. We also race them. Uh, the investment to raise a racehorse is, is quite large. Uh, so that's why we put in so much to making sure the foal can be just as healthy as possible. We want to see the foal bright and alert, aware of the environment, sticking close to the mare, nursing, but the important thing is that it moves away from you. That's a normal response because they're prey animals. When we don't see that, then we know there's something wrong with the foal. So when you see the behavior change, it could be an infection, but it also could be the syndrome that's been described for about 100 years, maladjusted, nicknamed dummy foal. It could be that. Well, it used to be just a oh, nightmare. You, just, you go, oh great, you're gonna have to bottle feed this baby or tube feed this baby for the next 10 days or however long until it grows out of it. But it was pretty much a waiting game. It was really quite frustrating. To, it would take 24 hour you know, micromanagement and, and lots of bodies and no sleep until that baby came out of the syndrome. Our research showed the cause of that is not low oxygen, but actually a persistence of the hormones that keep them asleep in the womb. And we also found that the birth canal pressures, which we now mimic with a procedure in these foals that come into the clinic, they're maladjusted, we create birth canal pressures, it lowers the neurosteroids and they wake up, often very, very quickly, very similar to what happens when they're born. You put on the, the, the harness, it's, we built sort of a little harness, it just snaps on, doesn't affect the foal in any way, and then as soon as you go to tighten it up a little bit, they just drop and go to sleep. And then you unsnap it while they're out, and you unsnap it and they jump up and nicker. <laughs> it's amazing. We had one that you know was trying to climb in the feeder because it, it couldn't figure out how to get out of that corner. We squeezed it and it got up and nickered to the mom for the first time immediately. It was just astounding. They have identified a group of chemicals that modulate neurodevelopment in the foal that may be very relevant to autism, and so it certainly caught my interest. Well, this all started when uh, John Madigan and uh, Monica Alman came to talk to me and uh, suggested that uh, I should be thinking about a connection between uh, these two completely uh, unrelated disorders. and. Uh, uh, I really knew nothing about fetal transition in consciousness until they uh, sort of uh, forced me to think about it. We're very fortunate at UC Davis to have everything you need to have the One Health sharing of information and exploring new and novel ideas learned in one species that could apply to another. It's a unique environment and very special and I feel privileged to be there.